Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the David Mathis Podcast. I'm your host, David Mathis, um, and it's just me today. No guest today. Um, had someone lined up, but I think we're going to have to push that episode back. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is mental toughness, okay? Now, this is something that um, is near and dear to my heart. Uh, there's, <laughs> it's something that I haven't always been the strongest in in my life, uh, admittedly. Um, there's been times where I've been very weak-minded. Uh, it might not have seemed like it to the people around me, but inside, um, had a lot of self-doubt, had a lot of uh, anxiety, had a lot of beating myself up verbally. And, I, and I, I find that a lot of people are like that, especially a lot of the clients that I work with uh, today as, a, as an online strength and physique coach. Um, and you know, part of, part of my issue with my mental uh, lack of mental toughness in the past was, to be honest, feeling sorry for myself. Uh, and many of you guys might be listening to this and you're like, you know, I don't want to admit it to anybody else. I don't want to admit it to myself necessarily, but yeah, I, I feel sorry for myself. And I think that's sort of the root of a lot of um, weakness when it comes to mentality and setting out to do what we want to do, achieving the goals that we want to achieve, trying to start something new is, is we have this self-doubt. And a lot of it has to come from uh, us not believing in ourselves or us feeling like we're not worthy, things like that. And that's certainly the case of me in the past is, you know, I had a lot of insecurities. Um, on the outside, I might have seemed confident, but on the inside, I was just a, a weak-minded individual. And, you know, the Army helped me with a lot of that. Um, not to the point where I, I want to be, and I'm still not to the point where I want to be. I'm always constantly working on um, growing my mental health and my mental toughness, uh, the tenacity needed, the, uh, the thick skin per se. But I did learn a lot about mental toughness in the army and overcoming obstacles. And one thing that I see with a lot of people that I work with today is that they just don't believe that they can. Um, and the honest to God truth is, you know what, you're not going to achieve everything that you set out to achieve. All right. It's the truth hate to burst your bubble, but that doesn't mean that we don't try. And every time that we do not take a step forward, every time that we decide to play it safe or to uh, not test our limits, not go to that uncomfortable zone, right? Whether it be venturing out and trying something new or um, you know, getting that criticism, that uh, critique from people in order to help better ourselves, to make us stronger, uh, pushing ourselves in the gym, pushing ourselves with our diet, pushing ourselves with our cardio, whatever it may be for you. Um, when we don't allow ourselves to venture into that uncomfortable zone, all we're doing is weakening our mental state. We're not strengthening it. We're not even staying stagnant. By you purposely not venturing out, by you purposely not pushing yourself, not going to that place, not risking failure, you're not staying stagnant. You're declining, okay? Because what that's teaching you is subconsciously that you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in what you're doing. You don't believe that you can actually achieve this. And that's gonna carry over into many aspects of your life. And it did for me too. So what, one of the big things that I'm really huge on now is a lot of self-improvement, um, a lot of mental self-improvement and mental strength uh, exercises, things like that. Testing yourself, you know, what scares you? What do you not wanna do? What do you don't, what do you not think you can do? That's precisely what you need to be doing. I get people all the time that come to me and, um, you know, wanting to lose weight, all right, or wanting to put on muscle. And they have one little hiccup in the plan, one bad day, one bad week, and they go off the rails because they're not mentally strong enough. And that's one of the things as a coach I like to try to help people with. Um, maybe if more so than, uh, you know, getting their diet down pat, um, getting their training down pat is working on what's going on between your ears because everything starts with your mind, all right? You are not going to accomplish anything if you haven't first accomplished it in your mind. If you have not envisioned yourself doing it, if you have not envisioned yourself um, being able to push through the hard times because there's gonna be hard times no matter what you do, all right, in life, in your physique goals, in your performance goals, in your job, in your relationship, there's going to be difficult points. How do you react? What is the first thought that comes to your mind? Is it to cower, to run and hide and cower and get away from the uncomfortable situation? Or is it to confront it head on, face whatever's gonna happen, learn from it, either succeed, fail, 
use what you have uh, gained knowledge wise from the experience and try to do it again, right? However you think going into a situation like that is gonna determine what course of action you take next. And I think working on your mental health um, and your mental strength is a very underrated aspect that more people need to spend time on. People are always looking for the perfect diet, right? They're always looking for the perfect workout program. Nobody is talking about how can I get stronger mentally so that when these challenges that are inevitable um, come up, right? How am I gonna be strong enough to push past it? How am I going to get myself to look at the bigger picture, not be so focused on the uncomfortable time right now? push past it, be okay with failure, all right? Because it's not, it's not failure if you don't succeed. It's only failure if you quit. I know you guys have heard that before and it's kind of cliche, but it's true. The only time you fail is when you stop trying, all right? And in the past, that was me. If something was uh, uncomfortable for me, if something was unfamiliar, if something just seemed like, yeah, I don't wanna do it, right? I wouldn't do it. That didn't get me anywhere. That put me further in a hole. That probably escalated a lot of issues I had in the past. It wasn't until I started taking more of a concerted effort to work on my mental strength, not just physical strength, right? My mental strength that I started to succeed. That's when I started recovering. That's when I started um, going back to school. That's when I started getting better grades. That's when I started um, you know, getting into grad school, when I started my coaching business, all of this stuff. And it's all because of that growth that I went through from a mental uh, strength aspect. And one of the things when I, when I talk to clients and everything is I like to figure out, you know, what happened in their past, right? Why, why do they feel like they can't achieve something right now? So many people are impatient. And that is a huge aspect of this too. It's not that they, it's not even necessarily that they don't think they can achieve it. If they don't achieve it in a certain time frame, this maybe unrealistic time frame that they have in their minds, then they give up right? And then what happens? Then they start having this negative self-talk, then it starts escalating, their fitness goes down the drain, their nutrition goes down the drain, their health goes down the drain, and it bleeds over into other aspects of their life. And before you know it, they're in a tailspin, right? Why? All because they were not willing to face the uncomfortable times, because that's what life's about, all right? We want to, in society today, we have it very easy comparatively to the past, right? We have it very, very easy. We are not hunters and gatherers. We don't have to go out and, you know, hunt and gather our food. Although being someone who is really interested in hunting, I think more people should be doing that. But that's a whole other topic that I'll talk about another time. But the point is, is that if we want something now, we can have it now. We can go through a fast food restaurant, and get uh, food now. We can have anything from Amazon delivered to us right away. Sometimes that day or at the earliest next day, right? Point being is, is that we don't, face enough challenges in our life. And so over the course of the decades, as a whole, society's mental strength has gone down, right? We have become weaker minded individuals because of technology, because of all these conveniences. And I'm not here to say that these conveniences are not worthwhile. There's a lot of good that these conveniences do for us, right? Um, but we can't lose sight of how important it is to have that mental toughness. You don't want to get up in the morning to go do your cardio or your workouts, right? So what happens? Oh, I don't feel good. I'm tired. I'll do it tomorrow. You're not going to do it tomorrow. All right. You know, you're not because you've gotten yourself 20, 30 pounds overweight. So tomorrow never happened for you, right? You just kept putting it off and off. Instead, face that uncomfortable time. You know, I get up and go run in four, 4.30 in the morning. Um, there's not always days that I want to do it. Okay. But you know what? I have an objective, I get up, I stay committed to myself and my goals, I stay disciplined and I push past it. Most of the days when I get up and I don't wanna do something and I force myself to do it, those end up being the best days overall. And I hear that a lot from people when I talk to them, my clients and stuff where I kind of go through some of this stuff that I'm telling you guys and I, I tell them, listen, just get up and do it, right? You don't wanna go to the gym, you don't wanna do your cardio, that's fine, you're human, you're gonna have those days, you're gonna have those feelings, but feelings are, real. Okay. Feelings are real, but they're not always right. And what I mean by that is you can feel anything, right? It doesn't mean that that perspective of the situation is hundred percent or your perspective of the situation is hundred percent. We have feelings all the time, right? I mean, I could, I could be talking to somebody or I could get cut off in traffic or something. I can get pissed off. Is that 
feeling real? Yeah, it's real, right? But if I look at the situation, I'm safe, nothing bad happened, blah, 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 list goes on. It's not right, right? Being pissed off is not right. It's, it's just, and that goes for any aspect of what you're trying to do or what you're trying to accomplish. You're going to be pissed off at work, right? You're going to be um, angry at your spouse sometimes. You're going to be, you know, annoyed at your kids or whatever it is. It doesn't mean that's actually how you really feel. That's just what is the emotion that's popping up at the time. And we get so weak-minded that we grasp onto that momentary emotion and we think that that's reality and it's not, right? You love your spouse, you love your kids, blah, blah, blah. You don't hate them. You don't, you're not really annoyed by them. You're just in that moment, you, you kind of are. And you, you want that to, uh, or not you want that, you turn that into your whole reality. And that's not the case. That's what weak-minded people do. Strength-minded, strong-minded people, they focus on outcomes, right? Weak-minded people, they focus on the now. They focus on what little variable affected their mood now. Strong-minded people, they focus on the bigger picture. They say, okay, this is happening now. This isn't the reality of the entire situation. I need to get refocused. I need to take five minutes. I need to step away. Whatever it is you need to do to calm yourself down and you get refocused, all right? Strong-minded people focus on outcomes. They're outcome-driven, all right? Weak-minded people are emotional driven, emotionally driven. And that's where we really need to start working on some of these techniques. And I think one of the biggest ones is... Listen, understanding that you are in control. Your emotions are not in control. That piece of food is not in control. Um, your boss, well, I mean, your boss is in control, but I mean, oh, we got Kate jumping on here. Hey. Hey, hey. I didn't know if you were gonna join or not. I actually uh, started one, so we're in the middle of recording, but that's all right. We're gonna, we're gonna jump right in here. No, you're good. <laughs> Good. No, it was like the time zone thing. And I was like, oh, fuck, I said it for 10 in central time and you're Eastern time. Oh, so no, that's that, all right. That okay, so real, why, real quick for guys that are for people that have been listening to my little uh, rant going on right now. Um, I have Kate Callahan on with me. Kate is a good friend of mine. Hi. She is a uh, online physique coach as well. Um, she was in my master's program at USF. And where do you live now? South? Wait, where do you live now? So I'm moving to Texas. I'm in the middle of it. So it's, it's a lot of moving parts, uh, but I am moving. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I kind of changed up the topic a little bit, but I still want you to right. uh, chime in on this because I think it's something that I see a lot in you. And I think you could add a lot of good value. We're talking about uh, mental strength. You know, we're talking about how to overcome obstacles, getting rid of that weak-minded thinking, um, and, and mm -hmm. not letting emotions take over your results, right? So strong-minded people are, uh, they're, they're uh, uh, result-driven, right? They're not emotionally driven. They're result-driven. They focus on the bigger picture. And, you know, I think you're a really good one to uh, talk about this too, because you are one of the more determined people that I've ever met. Like, when you get focused on something, you don't let one little thing get in your way. You stay honed in on focus and stuff. So, you know, I've been talking about how um, a lot of clients and everything, they, they're very weak minded in the aspect of they don't have a lot of confidence that they can achieve what they want to achieve, whether it's fat loss, muscle building, contest prep, whatever it is, right? You're someone who is, is very focused in on her goals. What are some of the mental tools that you have that help you stay strong minded and not let these outside distractions throw you off? I think um, one of the most important things to acknowledge is a lot of people are driven by the opinions of other people. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get to a point when you realize that at the end of the day, everybody else is really driven on focusing on themselves and their opinion is just going to be their opinion. And at the end of the day, they don't really care how you do in any element of your life doesn't really impact them. Yeah. Um, and so when you realize that, you know, you need to be doing it for you and showing up for you. And at the end of the day, um, if you're showing up in a way that makes you happy, um, that is a big win. And so for me, I even had, you know, people that don't know, I played division one basketball in college. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Vermont. I'm five foot three and three quarters. Um, 
And my own family at some point told me, you're a small white girl from Vermont. You need to let go of this dream. Yeah. Um, and I did not let that stop me. Now, the route in which everybody is going to take to accomplish that goal is different. But when you're genuinely passionate about what you're pursuing, that doesn't stop you from continuing to fight for it. So, um, you know, I refuse to quit. And when you refuse to quit, failure doesn't exist, right? There are lessons, many stumbles, you're going to fuck up. Um, but that's how you learn and you continue to evolve. And so, you know, I, instead of getting a, a division one scholarship right away, I took a year, I hired an MBA skills trainer. I trained my ass off. Um, I moved to North Carolina on my own and I followed my dream. Um, and then I walked on to a division one institution and not only did I get a spot on the team, I moved into a starting position that year. Um, because my work ethic was insane. I was not the biggest, I was not the fastest, I was not the strongest, um, but I was the most passionate and the most driven person. And that stood out. Um, and you know, the, the best quote that I have from Wendy Palmer, who was my coach, um, was that my passion and, and fortitude and standard for excellence reminded her of herself. And she was a phenomenal, uh, division one basketball player at Tennessee. So, um, it's just, understanding that your own limitations most of the time are mental and you need to develop and work on mental fortitude um, and self-awareness to what to, what triggers you, uh, your surroundings. Is it a person? Is it an environment? Is it a continued uh, conversation that you're having with someone that genuinely just doesn't really want to see you win? Um, yeah. If that's the case, then my father, um, who was a military man, um, taught me the art of addition by subtraction. And unfortunately, not every relationship is there to be there forever, right? People play a concrete role in your life, uh, but if it's stopping you from growing and evolving to the person that you want to become, then they served their purpose. And that doesn't mean it has to be a negative thing, but sometimes you just have to separate yourself from that. Yeah, that, those are all excellent, excellent points. Um, I, one of the things I, I really liked that you touched on was, you know, you don't give yourself permission to fail, meaning like, you know that failure, you're not going to be perfect in everything, right? But you are Correct. not going to fail by giving up. You, you're going to, you're going to see it through. You're going to figure out what's not going right. You're going to address the issue and you're going to focus on a, a, on a result or a mission to get the result you want to, you want to go on. And that's huge. Um, I think too many people, and you know, I know we've kind of, I've kind of been talking about my clients a little bit and just like physique and performance, but this goes for anything in life. I think too many people are willing to give themselves permission to fail. Um, and, and that's different than understanding that failure is going to happen, right? Um, I'm not going to succeed in every single thing I, I do, but I'm also not going to stop and fail just at the first, uh, you know, the first hiccup in the road, the first roadblock. And, and you didn't either. I mean, you're a prime example there. I didn't even know that story. I mean, I knew about you playing basketball, but I didn't know that you took a year off and I didn't know that you you know, moved down there and, and walked on um, and got the starting job. I mean, I knew you were a hell of a basketball player, but that right there is a, an excellent show of determination. And, and I started talking off, talking at the beginning how, you know, in the past, I have not been as strong-minded as I want to be um, and not as strong-minded as I am now. And I'm not anywhere near as strong-minded as I want to get to. It's an evolutionary process. And you, you have to go through experiences. You have to understand that there are, there are roadblocks that are meant to come up along the way to test you. It, you're not going to have a smooth ride 100% of everything you do. Nobody did. Michael Jordan did it. Kobe Bryant did it. Tom Brady did it, right? Tom Brady, probably the most you know, uh, perfect example of roadblocks in his way, right? And where's he at? Seven Super Bowls later, you know, still, you know, he, he, he tore up my, my Colts back in the day, but you know, He's a, he's a buck now, so whatever. He's good. But anyways, um, I have a new appreciation for Tom Brady now that he's not a New England. Good. Player. I'm happy to hear that because he used to give me so much shit for I know. being a it was, it was more fan. You know what, though? Off topic, I used to do the same thing with Brett Favre because I'm a Bears and Colts guy growing up in that area. Bears number one, Colts two, because I kind of lived in Indianapolis for a while during the Peyton Manning era. Um, but I was the same way with, with Brett Favre. As soon as he left the Packers, I could admit that I liked him. But as long as he was playing for my rival, I couldn't, I couldn't admit that the dude was a great player. So, um, but, you know, getting back on topic, uh, mental toughness, you know, one of my favorite, actually two of my favorite people to follow, and this probably isn't going to be 
any shock to my listeners is David Goggins and, and Jocko Willing. Like those two are absolutely amazing. Um, Love them. They do not just speak, they act, right? They are a hundred percent correct in basically everything they're saying, but they're living it, right? They're, they're, they've had the past, they've, they've had their experience, but they're living it now, everything they say. And those two guys just fire me up more than anybody. Um, you know, there's times where I've said earlier, I, I don't want to get up and go run in the morning. Like, I just really don't feel like it, especially now with the baby. I don't sleep very much anymore. I don't want to do it. But I hear this little voice in my head saying, do it, do it. You're, nobody's ever, I've never heard anybody go for a workout and then afterwards, unless they get like completely injured, say like, oh, I shouldn't have gone for that workout, right? Like how many times have you gone to the gym and trained when you're like, this is not my day. Like, I do not want to be here. I don't want to do my cardio. I don't want to do all this. You, you want your goal, right? But you're human. There's days you don't want to go do this. What are some of the, the mental strategies you play with yourself, the mental games you play with yourself to just get up and get going? Because I know when you're done, you feel better. You're glad you went. Oh, absolutely. And so one of the biggest things that I I tell myself all the time whenever I feel that way is that the pain of discipline is something that I can stomach over the pain of regret. Um, because if you look back, you're never going to wonder what it would have been if you tried a hundred percent. Um, and that's how I live my life is I never want to look back and go, but what if I really tried? Yeah. What if I really committed myself to that goal? And one of the biggest things that I see clients struggle with, regardless of the goal, um, is self-efficacy, the actual belief that they can achieve it, yeah. right? It's much easier to make an excuse as to why you can't get there. And everybody in this industry is willing to sell you on the idea of why it is you can't get there. Pay me to fix this exactly. so that you can get there, dude. When really- You know what I tell, you know what I tell every client when they start? I'm like, listen- I would love to have you for two, three, four years, whatever, right? But realistically, you're not going to probably be with me that long. And when you leave, I want you to feel like you can you can do this on your own, right? Yes. I mean, average yeah. client usually is is about nine months to a year and a half. You know, that's that's a typical one of my clients. Um, I have some that have been with me for three, three and a half years. <laughs> you know, but um, I want people to feel empowered, and I don't think enough people are empowered. Like they, they feel like they have to rely on somebody else to guide them and they're not giving enough credit to themselves, their abilities, their intelligence, their fortitude to be able to guide themselves. And it's because they hit these roadblocks and, you know, society is kind of, there's a lot of good things about society nowadays. Like there's a lot of conveniences that I would not want to give up. Right. But there's also a lot of conveniences that I think have weakened ourselves mentally over the years and over the decades. And I think too many people are comfortable right now. Humans for growth, you, you are not gonna be comfortable. You are gonna need to enter uncomfortable zones. And there's so much stuff out there that allow us not to ever get to that uncomfortable zone. So once we do reach it, people don't know what the hell to do and they just retreat. It's so there's, there's so many people out there that are willing to tell you that it's not your fault. And it's much easier to play the victim than to take accountability for the reason that you are coming up short. Yeah. And I think self-awareness is incredibly important for success and acknowledging your shortcomings. That does not mean you're a bad person. That doesn't mean you're inadequate. That doesn't mean any, it doesn't say anything other than, holy fuck, I did wrong right there, but I can take this as a lesson and move forward. Um, and, and that is how, again, like being able to acknowledge where you fucked up instead of playing the blame game on something else, that's how you continue to level up as a person in your life, in your business, um, in your fitness goals, whatever that might be in your relationships. Um, and a lot of people struggle with acknowledging that something was actually your fault. Yeah. And that's okay because there is literally no, there's no one that I know that has never made a mistake, said something negative, done something that they shouldn't have done, um, made a mistake, but that's how you learn. That's how you get better at something. Um, and you made a, a statement about, you know, I don't want to coach people forever. I tell my clients that every single call, I want you to learn through this process. Mm -hmm. My goal is not to have you forever. If I do that, I'm limiting the number of people I can actually help. 
Um, and that is my goal as a coach um, and within my business. Like that's what I strive to achieve um, through leadership, through education, through teaching people mental fortitude and self-awareness. Um, because if I can do that, they're not only learning about the process of fitness and food and nutrition and training, but they're learning about themselves. And for me, that is one of the most exciting things about coaching is I'm you're more self-aware when you leave, right? I left an impact on you that's going to continue to cultivate itself within your lifetime to allow you to become the person that you told me from day one that you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and that's across multiple areas of your life. It's not just going to be from a nutrition and physique standpoint. Correct. Correct. I mean, people, the, the lessons you learn, the self-awareness you brought up, that it's so easy to not be self-aware anymore because we have so many mind-numbing distractions. We have the phone, we have social media, we have TV, the computer. I mean, whatever it is, drugs, alcohol, you name it. There's so many different ways that people can, you know, numb, numb themselves as soon as they start feeling anything uncomfortable. Um, and, and that's where I think over the decades, we've become weak-minded as a society. Um, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's something that people can't overcome but you have to be willing to, you have to be wanting to work on that aspect. I mean, earlier in the podcast, I talked about, you know, when I work with clients, can I work with the, the nutrition? I work with the, the physical, the training, all that stuff too. But I work just as much on the mental side of things as well. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, like, for example, I had a client check in this morning. All right. First part of the paragraph that she, she wrote me in her email was, um, I had a, I had a, a whoops day or something like that. I, you know, this, this week didn't go exactly like I wanted it to. Um, she still lost 1.3 pounds this week. And it's I'm so like, funny that you say that you had one, you had one day and it did not de derail you, but you get so focused on that one day, you lose track of the other six days. So I had a client check in this morning and it's funny. One of the things I, I really want people to take away from this is that coaching is not concrete and yes, mm -hmm. calorie deficits matter. And that is definitely the foundation, but more is not always better. Right. Better is better. Um, and I see this a lot, especially in women as they chronically diet, they're paying attention to these industries. Um, they're told that being smaller is better, that lifting heavy weights is going to make you bulky and all this bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a client check in today. And one thing that we've done during her fat loss phase is make sure that we're having really aggressive um, refeed days, right? Stimulating thyroid, interacting with hormones, really making sure that she's recovering. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to pair that with low cardio days. Um, and so she was you know, yeah. Af yeah, af yep. afraid to do this. Um, and she's, you know, one of those people. And so, you know, she was like, I felt like the refeed day was just too much, too much. And I look at her, her trends. Um, and I look at the assessment of not only her body composition, but how she's trending throughout the week and responding to the refeeds and she dropped weight after them. Mm -hmm. So imagine the fact that you're seeing progress and or stable with refeeds, which is also a really good sign. Oh, hundred percent. You're feeling better. You slept better. You're performing better, but the weight didn't move the way you wanted it to in a certain move, like in a certain day, right? It was down about half a pound. So, you know, it could be anything, but a lot of it was probably stress. But the fact that you can aggressively, and I'm talking, you know, over 80 carb refeeds, mm -hmm. um, you know, responding that well to it, but it's a mental hurdle to eat more when it's counterintuitive. And I just think that finding, you have these self-limiting beliefs, right? But oh. in order to get to where you want to be, you have to remind yourself, and again, this is self-awareness, what you've been doing is not working for you. Mm -hmm. If it was, you wouldn't have reached out. You wouldn't continue to be struggling. And so one conversation I have often is try this, commit to hundred percent. In the worst case scenario, you're still where you were. You didn't lose progress, right? You've been running yourself into the ground for years. Um, and one big aspect of coaching that I think is incredibly under acknowledged is the mental work that we do. Um, and no, we're not psychologists or therapists. You know, there are people and I do have resources for that as I'm sure you do too, right? You have to stay within your lane, but calling clients out and making themselves aware. My job as a coach is not to hype you up and be your cheerleader and be like, yes, we can do that, woohoo, right? My job is to level with you and be like, hey, 
this is where you're struggling, right? I'm going to tell you what you need to hear right now, because exactly. this is the truth of the situation, not what you want to hear. And that's okay, because I would rather hold my integrity and my standard of coaching and be honest with you and transparent with what's going on and pay attention mm -hmm. um, than to just be like, oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Who have a great week, you know, and, and just kind of send you on your way to you know, feel like you're accomplishing something, staying within your comfort zone. That's not what my job is. A, they've been with coaches in the past that have done that. They just are their biggest cheerleaders and they don't make progress, which is why they're coming to us to begin with, you know, at this point. Um, one of the things, and I, I, I think you do it too. I'm pretty sure you do it. You do like video feedback, right? With your yes. clients. So when these sort of things come up where people are, you know, resorting to this, this, and I'll just say weak-minded approach, like, oh, one day or one thing kind of screwed everything up. And you go and you actually show them the data. You point out what you're talking about, why this did not mess you up like you think it did. Yeah, I'll do screen recordings and highlight stuff. Exactly. That is what I have found really starts moving the ball with people when it comes to shifting from that weak-minded mindset to a, a more strength-minded, uh, strong-minded, I can't talk, a strong mindset. Um, because if you just tell somebody something, right, they're, they're, they're not going to necessarily believe you. You got to show them. You got to show them the data. That's why data is so important because what does, what does Lane always say? Data over your feelings or data fucks yep. your feelings or something like that, right? But facts truth, over feelings. Facts over feelings. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is a hundred percent true because I said it before you came on, you know, your feelings are real. You, you, you have them at the time, but they're not always right. They don't always indicate what the true reality of the situation is. And if you allow yourself, you know, one bad day has never ruined anybody, right? It's when one that thing I one, love, huh? The one thing I love saying is like one salad didn't make you skinny, right? <laughs> one cardio yeah. session didn't allow you to lose a, five pounds of body fat. Yeah. So one rest day or one untracked meal is certainly not going to make you go back to where you started. Right. But these are psychological hiccups that people have. And we all have them. Like I have them in my own elements of life. And, you know, I do still struggle mentally with certain aspects. And those are things I continue to be self-aware about and work on. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to you know, leveling with yourself, I think that a lot of people get anxiety um, if you're not taught about um, sustainable things, sustainable yeah. elements and reminding yourself uh, where you started versus where you're going. And yeah. so one thing I also keep is every client of mine has a folder and all of their pictures are in there. They're starting pictures in progress. So it'll be eight weeks and they'll be like, you know, I'm still feeling like this. I still feeling like that. And people instead start to nitpick when they've made phenomenal progress. And so not only do I pull up data, but I'm like, I, I had a client check in and she actually ended up sending me a side by side. I said, have you looked at your pictures? Just do me a favor favor and pull up your pictures, pull up where you started today and put it next to uh, where you started versus where you are today. And you tell me how you feel. Yep. 13 pounds difference, three inches off her waist. Right. And she's 53, like phenomenal mm. shredded. Like she just, her body composition is insane. Right. So you can't get caught up in th the fact that you see yourself every single day, right? You, of course, you're going to nitpick yourself and feel like you're not making progress. Yes. You're looking in the mirror and judging yourself every single day, which we all do. But at the same time, you have to be objective, right? And the data and the pictures and the images and all of this has to be taken into accountability. So have your moment, have your mental midget moment is what I like to call it. And then let's be objective and look at the data. Let, let's look at the actual information that lies in front of us. Yeah. And don't just look at the scale data the scale is not going to tell you the scale it doesn't tell you actually hardly shit it just tells you what you weigh it doesn't tell you what that weight is made up of it doesn't tell you anything I see more people have weight fluctuations due to sodium or stress or lack of sleep than I do about gaining body fat you know what I mean like and and I think kind of going back to what you you were just talking about with showing them the data showing them their progress pics showing them all this stuff you're empowering them you're empowering them to look at these things in the future. Next time when they get these feelings that pop up or whatever, they might not necessarily email you saying, okay, like, uh, blah, 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 I feel like shit. Like, I'm, you know, they're going to know, oh, well, she's just going to go pull up my data. So let me just go look at it, right? Let me go look at it, talk myself out of it. That's going to do more for them in the long run than you continually, continuously telling them week after week after week. If, if they... If you are in a position where you are having to tell a client 
week after week. You have to walk them off the ledge or talk them off the ledge. I mean, then either your communication to them is not getting through or they are so determined to be shut off from accepting reality and wanting to be empowered that you're just not really going to be in a position to help them. Right. I've had clients like that where it does not matter how many different ways I tell them and show them they have it stuck in their mind that either I'm not making progress as fast as I, I should, which that happens a lot with people. They, they kind of have unrealistic expectations, right? Um, that's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic <laughs> for sure. Or they have been in an environment or, you know, around people or been told their whole life that they're no good, right? They're weak-minded. They cannot accept the fact that they're actually succeeding, right? And, and that's, that's something I see a lot is people don't know how to handle success. They don't know that even just a little step forward, maybe it's not even a weight goal this week. Maybe you didn't lose as much weight you wanted, but you went out with your friends and you weren't freaked out, you know, at a restaurant or you ate a new food that you previously were afraid of, things like that. Those are all considered wins too. So it's understanding that there's many different ways to gauge progress. And if you can say, focus on that, each little victory you have is going to get you mentally stronger. And, that is, and that is why I think it's also very important. And I'm assuming you do this too, just based on the way that you're talking is you don't just look at data. If you're oh. not getting written feedback from your clients, their biofeedback, how their week went, what they struggled with, what they're motivated to do. If you're not really gauging not only the data, but learning that client and their psychology. So one thing that I think is awesome is, is always pointing out the win the client had that is completely separate from their data completely separate. Um, if they're overcoming mental things that they have struggled with previously, I always point that out because that is a lot of fucking progress. If mm -hmm. we can master this thing up here that runs us ragged, we are going to continue to manifest the results that we want to continue to see. Right. And so I make sure that I always point that stuff out because it is super important. The, I mean, the brain, it's the most complex and, and uh, the most complex muscle we have in our body, right? Like, you have to, you, people are so focused on exercising their, their body, their chest, their glutes, their legs, all this stuff. They don't spend enough time up here and everything starts up here, right? The, I, you prepping yeah. for whatever show you want to do next. You know what guys, if you're listening to this, she already has a vision of what, what her physique, what she wants her physique to look like when she steps on stage before day one of prep starts, right? Always. Somebody's going into a powerlifting meet. You don't think that they have numbers that they're shooting for in their head that they envision themselves hitting on the platform because they do a job, a, you know, a career, your college degree, both Kate and I, we had visions of graduating with our master's degree from USF before we even took our first class there. Right. I envisioned us actually being able to walk at graduation. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen though. <laughs> well, I did because I graduated in December. Okay, people. rub it in. I didn't. Okay, I did not because of COVID. So shout know, out to sucked. COVID. Thank I would have. I would have hated to go through. <laughs> I literally anyway, told my mom. But, I was like, I just want to throw myself a graduation party. Like, you know I've what, been though? thinking about this for so long. Sarah, Sarah, and uh, Taylor, and Jillian, and Megan, and I. Like, we were all sitting there, and we're like, this is the most boring shit in the world. Like, why did we do this? Why did, why did we choose to pay to go walk across the state? Now it was fun when we actually did it, but it was like three hours long and we're like, we we're just on our phones the whole time. And it was just, but anyways, we digress. Um, <laughs> so what you're really is, telling me is don't feel like you missed out on anything. <laughs> you did not miss out on anything. Trust me. You saved yourself money and a lot of headache. Um, but the, the point we're getting at is guys, you got to envision, right? I, I, any, any success, you are going to achieve it starts in your mind um if you are weak-minded you 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 cannot achieve success if you're weak-minded you just can't because there's going to be something that's going to hold you back now the best thing you can do is if you're in this position where you're like i'm just really negative i have low self-confidence all that stuff the way you start building up that confidence is by taking small steps don't try to make one big huge goal that you're going to try to accomplish right off the bat you have to establish progression. Just like in the gym, you want to build muscle, you progressively overload, right? Same thing happens with your mental toughness, mental fitness, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, this is what I had to do years ago when I went through therapy. I had to kind of start back at ground zero and it, 
hit, have little benchmarks, little goals that you can achieve along the way. It might just be, you know what, I'm going to go out or, or for somebody, it might be, I'm going to track hundred percent this week. You know, I, it, it doesn't have to be a big goal. It has to be something that is a little challenging for you. Right. But something that you're going to be able to accomplish. And then you gain that confidence, you bump it up a little bit. And it's just step-by-step step like that. Um, so many people are afraid to just even start right now. And, and that is going to be, that's going to hold you back. All right. That's going to be. And again, that a lot of that comes down to the fact that they've already made the excuse as to why they can't succeed. Right. Oh, and so I, one of the biggest things that I encourage people to do is if it feels scary, if you're nervous to try, fucking do it. That is a sign that you need to fucking do it and give it a hundred percent. Right. Because the biggest thing that I see also is like, well, I tried. You tried or you did, because there's a big difference there. I tried to track and hit my macros, but I was off every single day. Or I made a plan. I showed up for it. I gave it 100% of my effort, and it might not have been perfect, but I'm very close to where I wanted to be. Okay, yeah. there's a big difference between how much effort you give and the return on the investment that you're making is going to 100% reflect the effort that you're putting in. So if you're going to embrace the discomfort, and I don't want to hear it. I want to see it. Right. A lot of people will talk a big game. Oh, I'm going to try this and do that. Do you think I want to do hours of cardio and eat minimal intake for a couple days? Absolutely not. But nope. do I do it anyways? Yes, because I envision and I manifest the result every single day because the pain of discipline will always trump the pain of regret. And I'm telling you guys this and I really hope you take that. Like if it feels scary, you need to embrace that because it's something you need to work on. It's something that you haven't overcome yet. Right. And if you make the excuse that, oh, it's my hormones, it's my age, it's something else, right? It's my family, it's somebody else's fault, right? It's not my fault, even though you haven't even tried. And if you did try, you didn't do because your effort was minimal, right? Then you don't really know that you couldn't accomplish that goal. Instead, you just looked for an out as to why you weren't going to be able to accomplish it in the first place. Yeah. Did you try or did you commit? I mean, I, I can try anything. Doesn't I could give a half ass effort and try anything right? Just to say that I tried it. Uh, committing is something different. I, I'm not looking for perfection out of my- Nope. Goals. Consistent. Consistency. And as long as you are making, like you said, the effort, you know, if someone, someone's off by 400 calories one week, right? The next week, they're only off by 300 calories. I'm going to celebrate that. I'm going to say, yes. listen, that is an improvement. It's not where we want to be yet, but you're moving closer to it. And it's all about you know, figuring out where you're at right now in comparison to where your, your ultimate goal is and, and just starting from where you're at right now. Don't try to jump to that goal right away. You're, you're, you are going to fail that way because that's not how the human body is meant. That's not how the brain works. Like you can't just go from zero to a hundred right away. You, you have to kind of play games with yourself a little bit along the way. You have to have these little benchmarks. You know, if you're, I'll use a powerlifting analogy, right? You're, you're, you're squatting 225. You want to squat 400. Well, you're not going to go from 225 to 400 in a week, right? Maybe, maybe the first month you try to get that up to 230, right? Something like that. But too many people are impatient and, and me included. Listen, that was one of my biggest downfalls is that I am not a patient person. I have come a long way. I'm still a far way away from where I want to be. And my baby girl is teaching me a whole lot of patience real quick, Aww. but I'm improving. Right. And, and that's always been one of my biggest whole, uh, one of the things that held me back is that I was one of those that always thought I wanted it. I should get it right now. Right. Like I should be here. I should be there. I should have done this. I should have done that. The entitled one. The, yeah, right. You no, deserve no. these things. Well, you see other people have, and I'm not talking about you specifically, no, but it, in general, right. people will be like, oh, I see this person here and I deserve to be there too. And I've been dieting for a week, but mm -hmm. I forget that they've been dieting for probably five years. And I want to look like them now, but I don't want to wait five years to do it. So then you have to weigh the pros and the cons. What is it that you're willing to commit to? What are you going to sacrifice? And what are you not willing to sacrifice? And once you lay those boundaries down and you're aware enough of one, you have unrealistic expectations Two, like your entitlement is what's setting you back, which is fueled by your ego. And three, you're yeah. doing it because you're focused on the outcome versus the process. And one thing I love about bodybuilding, and I'm sure you do now on some level about powerlifting is I genuinely, and I adore the process. Every prep is different. Every stage look is different. 
every cardio session I'm challenged by something unless I'm completely distracted. But otherwise, like the mental fortitude and the self-awareness and the things that I learn about myself during prep is much more rewarding than any trophy or placing that I get on that stage. 100%. And, and you know, there was that sense of entitlement, but maybe not the way people are thinking of it. It's like you, you know, or you think you're working hard enough, right? Mm. Like, and that was always me. I, I should be here because I've worked my ass off. I've done the right things. When I was able to step back and really examine and, and do a lot of that self-examination, I didn't do everything I was, I should have done. I didn't do the things that I needed to do to be where I wanted to be. And that takes some self-actualization right there. It's like, you know, coming to grips with the fact that you, you might not have done everything you needed to do to get to where you want to get to. And like you said, you don't know other people's histories. You can't compare things, uh, other people and all that, but you have to drop the ego. You have to be willing to deconstruct from where you're at, figure out, start back at ground zero. What do I need to do? What did not, what didn't work this last time that I tried to accomplish it, right? Break that down, come up with a new plan and enjoy the process. And the process to me now at, you know, going on 37, that's what I enjoy more than anything. I, I really do. I don't care about as much like trophies or outcomes or anything like that. I care about the process. And that's one of the things that like I've really learned from guys like David Goggins and Jocko and all these guys is that in Kobe, I mean, you and I, we're, we're huge Kobe guys. Like the process is the point. It, it's, it's not the trophy. It, it's not any of this. You know what you're gonna do as soon as you get that trophy you're gonna put it on a shelf you're not gonna be satisfied anymore right you learn shit along the process that's gonna carry over into different aspects of your life 100 percent. yeah so one thing i wanted to point out which i think is really important to acknowledge is that someone else's success will never take away from your own and if you can realize that someone else succeeding and again perception is really huge in in mental states Someone else winning, in my opinion, shows me that it's possible, shows me that I can accomplish the same fucking thing, because why not? Instead of being like, oh, I'm not them. I'll never get there. It's like, holy shit, they did that. I can do that fucking too. Right. right. And so how you digest it and absorb it and then process it is going to vary your perception of the world and other people. Instead of feeling like, oh, they took that from me and now I can't get it. But like whatever people that are jealous or insecure for whatever reason, don't like to see other people win. But in my opinion, seeing somebody else win lets me know that I'm capable of doing the same fucking thing. Yeah. And then it comes down to the majority don't want to hear this and I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. The people that you compare yourself to or look up to are probably the elite 90% of us, 95% of us are not mm -hmm. right. And that is why when it comes to bodybuilding, I am not, and I will be very honest, I am not genetically elite. I am absolutely not. I have to work my ass off. I've been doing it for years. And guess what? I'm still not a pro. I'm not. And maybe I never will be. Not naturally. You know, and, and that's a conversation and self-awareness that I have to have. I've worked my ass off. My training age is there. I know my intensity is there. I've overloaded. I've built a lot of muscle in my time. Oh, yeah. You know, I've built my physique. Yeah. But at the same time, there's only so much my genetic potential is going to allow me to do. Yeah. Right. That is the facts. Those are the concrete facts. And they don't care about my feelings. I would love to wake up and have the Cinderella story. Trust me. And I think a lot of us do. But at the same yeah. time, most of us are not going to experience that. So you have to make your story a Cinderella story. You have to make it there for you. And when I look at my physique now and I look in the mirror and I look where I started and how much I've progressed, to me, that process and that journey is much more of a win than an IFBB Pro card. That's how I feel about it. And so it's like, you have to be very aware of what is it that you want to achieve. Do you want the trophy for your ego or do you want the journey because it's going to make you a better person? I love it. I think that's a great way to end it. That's awesome. I, I, I just really, Boom. This whole topic is to me, mental strength and mental toughness is um, in many ways what I'm, more interested in, in even than like nutrition and training nowadays. Um, because I think it's something that everybody can always grow from. Like you, you always have room to get mentally tougher. You always have this, you always have that. Um, you, we have the process and every time we accomplish something, we have a new process that we can start, that we can learn from and grow from if we're willing to do it. And I think that more people, I hope this podcast really helps people with 
Um, just recognizing that maybe they have some weaknesses mentally that they need to work on. Um, that doesn't mean that you're a failure. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, recognizing your shortcomings is going to make you stronger in the long run. So always remember that. And Kate, I'm glad you, I'm glad you jumped on. Um, I know we had another topic we were going to talk about, and we will talk about that at some point down the road. Um, but why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? And I'm, of course, going to leave all your information down below. Yeah, so I am Kate and Michelle on Instagram. Uh, I also have a coaching business, leveluptraining.com. It's L-E-V-L up, not level, but level. Yes. Um, and I'm sorry, I am very passionate. You guys probably can take that away from my conversation here. I'm very passionate about what I do, so I get a little hype. Uh, so I'm sorry if, if that overwhelms some of you. <laughs> hey, guys, you you couldn't ask for a better, uh, a better coach, a better person in your corner. Um, Kate's awesome. She's always been a good friend since day one. And we spent many hours in that, uh, in that little, in that little teacher's lounge at school, just, just studying and trying to help each other. And, um, she's definitely a, a wealth of knowledge and resource. So make sure you're following her. You have a podcast, right? Yes, it is the fit shit podcast and David will be coming on. Fit shit podcast. That's right. I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to leave all her information down below. I love the name of that. Um, it's much fancier than the David Mathis podcast. Um, it's a little bit more marketable. So I like that. Um, I don't know. I just had to go with what shoot what came off the dome. I was like, <laughs> I just want to talk about well, fit shit. You know so what? That's it, what we're going to do. As you guys get to know Kate a little bit more, if you don't already, that totally fits her 100%. So <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for coming on. I'm glad we got to do this. Guys, thank you for uh, tuning in. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you guys are listening to this on Spotify or iTunes, you can watch it on YouTube as well. Just head over to my YouTube channel um, and I will be back with another episode soon.